Okay, there it is all drained out. I just got 180 uh, RPM, 180 revs a minute out of that, out of this little bucket. So, if you can imagine that expanded 10 times, 180 revs a minute, yeah. uh, off that just that simple impeller, it's just tin. You could make a big one just out of an old 44 gallon drum or some some one millimetre steel. That's just made out of a tin can. And all I've done, like I showed you before, is I've made this cross piece and then hung my turbine. There it is there. That's what it looks like. And I found that if you actually closed the pitch, it was stretched out a lot more than that. It was up here. And I've closed it down a bit and now the actual uh, efficiency has increased the tighter of the pitch. It's actually made it work much faster. But that's just made out of an old, well it's actually out of an old uh, malt tin brewing beer. A nice big tin. I cut it in a pair of scissors and knocked it flat and then cut the crescent moon shape in it and twisted it into this shape. It's very simple. Just like a seashell. So that's my impeller. And it's on a carbon fibre tent post. And then, I, as you can see, I've drilled a hole in the base of the bucket. This is just to, see, like that, to allow the water to escape. And then a sort of a very simple bearing at the bottom with a hole. I'm talking to the camera. That's all Eden. That's my mate Eden there. He's my technical assistant. There's Eden, my technical assistant. I'm looking after him today. He's looking after me. And then that goes in the, in the socket down there. Like that. So that's in, in place, and then I've carefully measured these cross beams so that they fit exactly into the bucket. There's my turbine, and I can't do two things at once, and I'm doing it all by myself, so I've actually got this up to, up to 170 RPM, just using this water here. And I'll take this, oh dear. I'll fill it up again. Okay, let's try it all again. I'm going to fill this tub up with water. And we've got the whirlpool happening there, as you can see. It's all a bit. There you go. And it's a very simple shape. It's a very simple shape that I'm using. It's like a crescent moon and it's twisted to make a series of cones and then I've glued it, attached it to a, with hot glue, to a carbon tent post, section out of a tent peg. And then I drilled a hole in the wood and drilled a hole in the base of this tub here. And um, it's letting just enough water through the base there to create a whirlpool. So we've got current. And I'm slowly but surely going to fill this tub up with water. And you watch what happens as we get water over that turbine. I've got to be careful here, if I let go of that hose it'll come out and spray to the camera. There we go. See? So everything's spinning. There's not much torque there because we're only dealing with a very small amount of water and it's only a very small turbine but if you can imagine this at a ten times scale um, you've got a fair bit of weight in the water alone loaded into those blades. It's a very simple idea. Oh, geez. So, there we have it under tension, under load. And I counted it before with a stopwatch and I was getting 175 revolutions a minute. My mate in Bali's getting 350 out of his impeller, but this is not bad for first effort. It's a very, very simple idea. It's Victor Schuberger's Vortex technology. So if you can imagine that turbine, that sh sorry, that yeah, that rotor, that shaft, the turbine, attached, made out of, um, you know, ten times as big, with a stream of water going through it, you've got actually significant power because, as Victor said, it's the speed of the water, not the uh, pressure. And that water's running pretty fast. Creating a whirlpool. 
so I'll just be careful here. I'm just moving the bucket over the edge of the steps as a bit of a gate valve. The water's um, I can adjust the bucket over the step and it will increase the amount going out the bottom so I'm just sort of trying to tune it so that that's moving at maximum efficiency but that's spinning quite well now I'll count it and I'll get back to you okay so here it is all complete there's the cross beams the impellers on the inside down there and there's the hole and that's just a really simple system to work out the basic ideas just using a garden hose if you go any bigger well you've got complications because you've got to find a bigger water source but there's just enough water coming out of this garden hose to uh, to run this and I'm learning already this is my first tentative steps into vortex technology and impellers and I found surprisingly uh, quite successful with a very very simple idea it's just a, a, a crescent shape I mean that thing, that modest little machine there, that tiny little impeller, is now at the bottom of the vortex. Like when it's spinning now, it's actually hitting the fastest part of the vortex, or the whirlpool, which is actually at the bottom. Um, you know, I had the impeller taller than that, but it was only hitting the slower moving water higher up in the vortex. And I figure that the lower you go within the, within the vortex, within the whirlpool, Obviously the water is spinning at its fastest just at the exit point outside the container. So if you make your impeller squat, you've still got the same surface area. It, nothing's changed as far as the surface area, but the pitch has changed. I've got my suspicions that if you go even tighter with that pitch, you'll get even more speed out of this impeller. But at the moment, that's sitting at around 100 and uh, what did I say, 180 or 190 RPM. Now, there's not, you know, if you grab hold of this while it's spinning, you can stop it so easily with your finger, because we're only talking about a small body of water, but if you can imagine this expanded 10 times, where that impeller is actually 5 feet across, and you, you're now talking about a serious amount of weight in water, because you've not only got the speed of the water, you've also got the gravity of the water. So in this type of situation and with this type of impeller, not only are you exploiting the energy of the speed of the water, but you're also deriving some uh, benefit from the gravitational force of the water uh, dropping. And you can imagine if this impeller was you know, 10 times this size, the amount of water you've got in the impeller at any one time is a significant amount of water. You know, It must be tens of kilos of water spinning with all that weight and all that speed, it'll have a high, high amount of uh, energy to translate into electrical power at the shaft up here. So anyway, I'm very encouraged by this. This is just a very simple experiment, but it's, it's, it's worked. It works really well. And if you can get 180 RPM... See, if that was just a conventional paddle wheel in a stream, you, you're only going as fast as the water in the stream. This is different. This is taking the water in, spinning it up in the whirlpool, increasing its velocity, then hitting the impeller, and uh, the impeller is able to exploit it. And also it's self-centering. Very interesting. It's quite stable. Yeah. Anyway, hope everyone's having fun out there with Vortex technology. I'm, you know, I'm fired up big time. I think Victor Schuberg will He's one of the greatest men of all time and it's very interesting how all of his work was suppressed and stolen from him. And uh, we're all living in the age of truth now, it's all coming out and hopefully there's a, all of us, millions of us, start playing with these technologies and making for a more sustainable world, you know. Anyway, keep you posted.